Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the workshop. You know, a week or two ago, I had posted a video about this little amp right here and how I added this external speaker jack to it. And I had titled it as a how-to video. And if you haven't seen that, I'll go ahead and link it in the description for you. But um, I'd gotten some feedback on that where people said it wasn't really a how-to video per se. Um, it was just showing that I did it on this one and I talked really about the wiring and the type of jack that I used that allowed me to do it. And um, that's fair feedback. So, you know, um, if you haven't watched that video, then go ahead and watch it because I'm not going to cover those points in today's video. However, I'm going to grab my Orange Crush 12 here, which is a little 12 watt amp with a six and a half inch speaker. It actually sounds pretty good. It's got a pretty cool tone stack on it. It allows you to dial in a lot of different tones. And I always keep a little reverb pedal on the back because I do wish it had reverb. But anyway, and let's just add an external speaker jack to it because it doesn't have one. So maybe over here or something I can, can put a, an external speaker jack. And um, let's just do that today so you can see the whole process. So if you're curious about doing it yourself, then you can follow these steps. Okay, so I got the amp face down on my workbench here. And first things first, let's get these cables out of the way. And then looks like we need to take out these four screws. So let's do that. And sometimes getting these uh, panels out can be a little bit of a chore, especially if you've never done it before. Okay, so there we go. So the panel is off. And now I can see right inside here, I can see the speaker. And it looks like I just take out these other four and I should be able to take the whole amp chassis out. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so now I've got those four loose. It should just slide out and it does. However, it is connected to the speaker. So I have to be a little bit careful here. So let's see if I can disconnect it from the speaker. Okay, this is very unusual, but whatever system that they use to attach, it has like little slide on terminals, but whatever system that they use, they seem to be like locked in place. They're not just releasing like a normal slide terminal. So let me mess around with it a little bit here. I'm trying, I don't want, don't for, if you, if you come into this situation, don't force it because you could break the speaker terminal. You wanna make sure you can just slide those off gracefully, but it looks like they've almost crimped these in place so they can't come off. I might just end up, you know what? I'm just gonna clip the damn wires and I can get a better look at it. So, okay. So this red and black wire here are the wires that were going to the speaker. Um, but since I can't, they have slide on connectors, but since I can't get them to slide off, I'm just gonna clip it. And now the amp chassis is completely free. So I'm gonna set this off to the side for a second. Okay, I figured out what was going on there. These particular slide on connectors, they have like a little tab that pops up. So you slide it onto the speaker and then it pops up into the little hole that's through the center of the terminal and it actually locks it in place. So I had to actually push that down with a little needle nose pliers to get it out. Now at this point in time, you wanna take a good look at your speaker here and see if it is marked with its impedance. Now this one right here is marked eight ohm. I'm, I don't know if you can see that, but it's marked eight ohm right here, telling me that that is an eight ohm speaker. If you don't know, or if it's not marked, what you can do is you can take your multimeter and you can just use the resistance setting on your multimeter and you can just meter it. Okay, so hopefully you can see this here. The screen's kind of telling me it's about 7.1, 7.2, like right in there, which is what you'd expect from an 8 ohm speaker. Now, the reason that that, that, that is important, um, it doesn't matter right now, but it will matter when we go to plug in our external cabinet is we want to make sure that we match that impedance. Right, so if this is an 8 ohm speaker, I'll want to use an 8 ohm external cabinet, which I happen to have. If this was a 16 ohm speaker, I'd want to use a 16 ohm external cabinet. If this was a 4 ohm speaker, so on and so forth. Now, one thing to mention there, you can always go higher, but don't go lower. So if I had a 16 ohm cabinet, that would probably be fine to plug into this system. But if I had a 4 ohm cabinet, I would not want to plug that in here because I don't know for sure that this amp can handle the lower number. Okay, so the next thing you want to do here is you want to figure out where to mount your speaker jack. So you want to look on the back, make sure obviously you don't want to hit uh, any of the boards or anything like that. So like maybe right in here might be a good spot. We've got a lot of open space. So the next thing to do is I need to make sure that the wires are long enough to reach. And it looks like they might be just a little bit short. 
Um, but we've got a little zip tie here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna clip that zip tie and see if that gives me just a little more. There we go, perfect. So that gives me enough wire to get to where I wanna be. And then I can re-zip tie this in just a second. Okay, so I've marked an X here where I want to drill my hole. I've re-zip tied that bundle of wires there so they're still nice and together. And then I don't know if you can see this, if the camera is gonna pick this up, but right here on the board, right where these two wires come out of the board, it says to speaker. So that's telling me that these are going to the speaker and duh, I just cut them from the speaker. But if you're not sure which wires to use, you always wanna use the wires that go to the speaker because that's where the output power is, right? So um, you find those wires and those are the ones that you're gonna wanna use. So our next step is we've gotta drill this hole right here and we're gonna use a 3 8 inch bit to drill that hole. Okay, so you can see here, I've got the drill press. I've got my 3 8 inch bit in the drill press. I've ad adjusted the RPMs up here to the correct speed to drill through um, steel. And I've got it clamped in place here with a two by four to make sure that this doesn't move on me when I'm drilling it. Uh, so here we go. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp that. And you see there's all these metal shavings and we don't want those inside the amp. So I'm gonna dump those out. And then I'm gonna use my compressed air and make sure that I've blown any excess in there. Now, ideally, if you were doing this, you would take the circuit board completely out um, and then uh, it's before you would drill so that you wouldn't have any metal shavings under the circuit board. But being that I didn't do that, I'm just gonna use the compressed air here and Okay, so remember, this is a Switchcraft 12A. That is the jack you want. You do not want a standard mono jack. You do not want a stereo jack. You want a shunted jack. You can just kind of see the shunt there. And uh, again, I go over that a lot more in the previous video, but let's get this mounted to the chassis. Okay, so I've now got my speaker jack mounted over here. There it is on the back, ready to go. And the next step is to solder everything up. Now at this point, you wanna look at your two wires that would have been going to the speaker and you wanna look at the gauge of those wires. And you're gonna need some additional wire because now these are gonna to go to the jack and you're gonna have additional wire going from the jack to the speaker. So you're gonna want that to be a similar gauge to this. Basically, you're gonna want it to be this gauge or larger, larger meaning a smaller number, but larger around this gauge or larger around. So if this is, for instance, if this was a, a um, 18 gauge, you could go to a 16 gauge, but you wouldn't want to go to a 20 gauge. Okay, I went through my box of wires and unfortunately I didn't have a red and a black in the right gauge, but I do have a gray and a black. So I'll use the gray to the red and the black, obviously for the black. And there we have um, our two wires. Okay, so first things first, I went ahead and wired from the output to the jack here. And so the black one goes to the sleeve contact, the red one goes to the tip contact, and then our internal speaker will go to the shunt and the other black will come over here with this black. So let's get that wired up. Okay, we can probably, you can probably see here, the jack is mounted, everything is soldered. The red and black wires coming off the uh, the um, output come over here. The red wire goes to the tip and the black wire goes to the sleeve. Then this other black wire also goes to the sleeve and this gray wire goes to the shunt. So these two wires here will go over to the speaker. Okay, so I've now set the chassis back in. I haven't screwed it in yet, but I realized one thing when I put it back in, the way that this speaker was uh, from the factory, it was flipped this way so that the terminals were at the top and I realized that's a lot harder to work with. So I just took the four screws to hold the speaker in, out, flipped it 180. So now the terminals are on the bottom. And so that should make it real easy to hook these up. So let me see if I have any of those little um, slide on tabs and we should be good to go. Okay, so you can just see, I got a couple of those little crimp terminals, hooked it to the speaker by the way. The speaker is always marked positive and negative. So make sure you hook it up the correct way. In my case, the positive is over here on this side and that's where I put the gray wire. Um, so I think I'm hooked back up as far as the electronics. Next thing to do is to put in the screws that I took out and let's test this baby out, see if it works. And there we have it. Okay, so we're out here in the workshop. So I grabbed a cigar box guitar off the wall. I've got it plugged in. Um, the amp is powered on and the guitar is plugged in. Let's bring the volume up and 
the sound is definitely coming out of there so it still works and by the way the external cabinet is not plugged in yet so we didn't break anything it still works exactly as it should still works now let's go ahead and plug in let's go ahead and plug in the external cabinet okay so I've now got it plugged into the cabinet here and so this should be no longer functioning as a amp as a combo amp it should just be functioning as a head so let's bring the volume up and I'll tell you right now I hear the buzz down here I do not hear it up here same for the sound the sound is definitely coming out down here nothing coming out up here you might not be able to tell that from the camera but trust me it is you however you might be able to tell it's probably a little bit bassier and a little bit louder coming out of that celestian eight So with just a Switchcraft 12A jack, I was able to turn this from a combo into something that can now be used as a head. And granted, I've got it plugged into a single eight here for demonstration, but I could plug this into a 412 if I wanted, as long as it was an eight ohm cabinet. So there you go. And one more little thing I'd like to show you here. So hopefully you can see this here on the back. I put a little label here that says external speaker eight ohm, just in case I ever let anybody borrow this amp or if I ever I don't know if I forget of what that's for. There you go. So now it's labeled. So folks, if you like this video, why don't you go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. And if you like my content, please subscribe if you haven't already. And please leave me a comment. You know, this video came from a comment on a previous video that I posted. So without that comment, this video might not exist. So don't be shy about that. I always try to respond to your comments. Really appreciate it. And I will see y'all in the next video.